Hello and welcome to the Head Start Masterclass. On this episode, we're going to be talking about how to get results from email marketing. Now, a lot of people have heard about email marketing. Some are doing it, uh, but not everyone knows how to actually get results from those campaigns. So whether you're doing email marketing for an e-com store or you're a software developer or you're an information marketer, how can you get results from email marketing regardless of your industry. To take on this topic today, we're having Samson Aligba. Samson Aligba advises founders and businesses on leveraging digital technologies. And today he's going to be giving us the breakdown about how you can get results from your email marketing campaigns. Samson, it's a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me. Good All right. So I I just talked a little bit about um, your intro, but tell us a little bit about what you do concerning advising businesses for leveraging technologies. What kind of technologies and what do they hope to get from your consulting? Okay, um, thanks, John. Um, I run a business, a technology consulting business. Um, for the last eight months, we've been actively establishing our presence, advising on how to leverage cloud technology, how to leverage fintech, how to leverage marketing automation systems. And then we currently have a product out there for enterprises on how to uh, help them to automate their um, accounting process. So we okay. merge accounting and procurement into one automation robot you know, that helps supply up payments, making it easier, making it um, more transparent and more audit friendly, you know. So those are some of the products that we have from our company. Okay. Um, my previous life, <laughs> it's good to say that now, I ran a digital marketing agency for like six years. So. Okay. Awesome. 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 So um, right before we get into the meat of today's topic, we're going to take a, a quick message from our sponsors. My name is Babajide Kwe. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Kicks. One of the uniqueness of the Kicks footwear brand has been our ability to tell stories with our shoes. It is very important for consumers to buy from us small business owners because where you shop matters. When you buy from us, you're empowering us to hire more people, provide better products and services, and in turn, we can empower the economy as a whole. So for small businesses that haven't moved over to e-commerce side of things, they are missing a lot in terms of the opportunities that e-commerce can offer them. And we really don't have to miss out because Visa is helping small business owners do business easily online. So if you're an entrepreneur, begin by registering on www.visa.com.ng where you will discover more about Visa and how they are empowering small businesses to thrive. I encourage all small business owners to sign up at visa.com.ng today to learn more about this initiative. Interesting. We can talk about this Visa partnership. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Small businesses and they're having the where you shop matters campaign right now but one of the most important aspects of that campaign is that they're actually supporting small businesses with the newly launched visa sme hub now one of the great things about the visa sme hub is that you get a free online store for your business and that online store comes pre-integrated with our local uh, with our local payment gateways like pay stack and flutter wave so you don't need to know how to code you don't need to bother about the technical setup you just go over to visa.com.ng register at the apply to register at the visa sme hub and get access today so to get that it's visa.com.ng hello my name is nelly abogo i'm the ceo of nelly's nigeria i am a wife a mom and an entrepreneur Every small business has its own unique story. Mine began when I decided to make healthy gluten-free products for my son. When people saw what I was doing and how my business was growing, they asked, how are you growing your business? And that was how Niger Brand Chic was created. We source our ingredients locally because we know that where you shop matters. 
small business entrepreneurs can access a bouquet of digital solutions and business offers to grow their business online by simply signing up on the website. Sign up at visa.com.ng today to benefit from this initiative. All right, Samson, we are back and let's get into how to get results from your email marketing campaigns. But to start with, how can people even begin email marketing? Let's assume someone has a business, they don't have a list, they don't even know what software to use. How does one get started? Okay, um, see email marketing as one channel of marketing. And um, as with all channels of marketing, you are speaking to people who, for us, we call them tribes. You're speaking to people who have special interests, special needs, um, and they have a protocol for you to speak to them. Now, when you're speaking to a group of people, fresh, brand new, you need to introduce yourself. Introducing yourself means you have to give something to get that audience to come, connect and communicate back to you. In the email marketing world, you, we call it um, lead magnet. So you give something, the audience, they are interested in that thing that you are giving, they respond back by giving you access to their email box. When they share that email box with you, it's now up to you to treat it like um, treat it like gold, really. Because, I mean, if they revoke that access, sometimes you would know, sometimes you would not know. And one of the ways you might not know is it just creates a label for you. And it's not spam, it's going to someone that nobody's reading. So, I mean, that's it for you, you are born some people would say but if it goes okay. to spam even worse and that's the end of the communication okay so that's how people can get started um so like if a beginner were to start with some kind of uh like like software like someone's on facebook now and needs and needs to just start generating leads like wh what practical steps can they really take in a nutshell okay practical steps step one create something that um you think these people will need. I'll give you a list of some things you can put together. You can put together an ebook, you can put together an audio cast or a podcast, you can put together um, a list, a listicle, a, 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 a curation of other articles that speak to a certain subject. You can put together a spreadsheet that has a directory of tools, um, books, even if it's even a directory of contacts. So I, I, I read a story once, even though the startup doesn't exist anymore, of someone who put together a directory of, um, 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 of journalists to speak to if you want to launch your product in the startup world. And he put a gate fee to it. I mean, like, it's a simple, <laughs> it's a simple spreadsheet hosted on Google Sheets, and he had a paywall up, a landing page, and that was it. Start, startup is born. You know, so there are several things that will be valuable to this audience it's just for you to sit down, do the work, and make sure it's something that I cannot just Google and find elsewhere. I mean, if, if, if it's on page one to five of Google, why should I give you my email to, to get it right. from you? But, you right. Know, so. right. So let's head on into it now. Like, you talked about treating email your email subscri subscribers like gold right and yeah i mean we all know the popular methods that people use to get off of your your list and to stop receiving your communications they can mm -hmm. simply unsubscribe but you mentioned other things like someone could add a label uh, but it's also something else which is your email getting dumped into the spam folder and that's a big problem and it accounts for why a lot of people's emails are declining um e email open rates i mean are declining um now we, yeah. we know about spam filters um that google has for gmail yeah. and other email providers have what are the some ways that the, the strongest right and you know yeah. there, there's no comprehensive list of factors that account for those emails getting to the spam folder i mean because if everyone knew what the rules were then oh. <laughs> spammers right. would have a field day, I guess. Yeah. But w what can some well-meaning marketers do to avoid the dreaded spam folder? Okay, so um, spam spam is costing the entire industry billions of dollars annually. Um, as at twenty as at twenty fourteen, 
it's recorded that the ISPs are spending not of $90 billion a year combating spam. That's a lot of money. Um, I'm not sure what it is right now in 2020, so you can imagine that if you misbehave, they won't think twice to kick you out, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, for, for companies and marketers who legitimately want to send an email, first rule, don't just buy an email list and start sending. I mean, you would get burned. One thing the ISPs have come, one tactic they've come to use um, in recent times is what's known as a spam trap. So you see all those lists out there that claim to have um, CEOs of companies in Lagos or CEOs of companies in Abuja or CEOs of companies in New York, yeah? Um, ISPs have also infiltrated those lists with some email addresses that are set deliberately to identify people who will just shoot an email to that list. And once you yeah. do that, your email gets to that spam trap, blacklisted, and that's it, you're gone. Uh, wow. <laughs> so um, spam so trap. First, first, yeah, first, so first thing, once you get a list, you purchase it, which I don't advise, but if you purchase a list, first do your due diligence, clean out that list. There are lots of... Um, services out there that help you do email verification. You can upload your list to them. It will cost you some money, really. And then they help you clean out the list. They check for emails that will bounce. They check for emails that are full. They check for emails that are fake. Um, and they also, some of them check for spam traps as well. And they will just give you back a clean list that you can go um, communicate with. So that's, that's, that's one step. Step two, if you are really, really serious about email marketing, then you would want to choose and use one of the um, well-known email marketing providers. Um, again, if you just want to use their free plan and move on, you will not get the best of it. You have to move on yeah. to a paid plan. Um, and with a paid plan, you would get certain features that would enable your communication to get through um, to to the inbox of your of your recipients. Step three, if you are really, really serious, right, you would want to, um, on any of these email platforms, use your own dedicated IP address. Now, what does that do for you? Now, if you're using shared IP, um, so let me explain that. For your for an email to leave your, your system or your inbox, your outbox, as it's called, to another person's inbox, it goes through a process. The, the thing is, it goes through your own server, your ISP, your provider. So in this case, let's say Gmail. And then Gmail sends it to the other person's provider server. That identification of where that server is, is the IP address for that machine. Now, the email gets to that IP address and then the system software identifies the email box on that server and then routes your email to that particular mailbox. Now, the way IP addresses work um, for servers, once an IP address is registered to a particular organization, it is known by everybody. And the reputation of that IP address is, is the last line of defense for your emails going into inbox or spam. If you're using a dedicated IP address, it means everything about that IP address is on you to protect, to guard, to ensure that no other person is using it for some spammy tactics or tricks, um, no other person is using it to scam people. So you kind of like have your own private phone number with which you can send out email addresses. If you are using the shared IP address, which is on most of the email marketing software, all right? You are basically sharing that phone number with, I'd say, 10,000 other marketers, and you are not so sure what the next guy is doing. And if the next guy is playing some spammy tricks, that IP address is burned. All of you mm. are burned. That's it. Okay, so I just got a couple of things there. Um, Everyone needs to, first of all, be aware of the spam trap because most people don't know the, that even the spam trap exists, not to even talk of escaping 
the spam trap, all right? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, ignorance is not bliss in this case. So, you're going to know there's a spam trap waiting. The ISPs have infiltrated it. If you've bought a list somewhere, the ISPs have also bought the same list. <laughs> exactly. And they have, yeah. yeah they're, they're on to you because, as, as you say, um, spam is costing the industry billions of dollars. I don't you, you, you mentioned a figure. How many billion dollars? Um, 90 billion. Uh, Nin- 20, was it, is it billion or million? Billion. With the B, my, yeah. that's a lot. So they are vested in cleaning out spam. So guys, use these tools. Be aware of the spam trap. Oh, use sorry. software that cleans out your email lists um, from those booby traps in there. So you get a cleaner email list that you can use for communications. And if you can help it, maybe don't buy an email list. Use uh, permission marketing yeah. so that you can get exactly. more results. Yeah, it's kind of better when they're expecting you, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about uh, specific industries now. How would you ex- how would you advise someone in the e-commerce business to get results and sales from their email marketing ah, campaigns? Fantastic. That's uh, so retail, commerce, e-commerce. Um, there's a lot that you can do. Um, first things first, treat treat email as communication. Communication is two way. Um, I speak, you speak back at me. Um, it's not. Uh, it's not. It's not a TED talk. <laughs> You're not just saying stuff and nobody's responding back to you. Um, so first things first, know your audience. You sell one particular product. It's easy. Everybody's interested in that product. You know everything that you're interested in for that particular product. It's easy to communicate. You sell a diversity of products. Now you start talking about segmentation. Who in your 10,000 customer list likes the red car and who in that same list likes and prefers the blue car? If you can't segment, then you will just be speaking to everybody the same way. That already reduces your rate of return results, right? So again, let's speak practical steps. I buy something, I order something from you today. Um... On your website, you require me to register before I can make purchase. By just that action of registering, I've given you permission to speak to me. Now, how you communicate back to me depends on the strategy you want to run. What we advise is you should have a welcome plan or a welcome, a welcome package, something that introduces the brand, the company to this customer to say, hey, welcome to the brand. This is what we believe in. This is our mission. This is what, what we sell and all of that. Basically onboarding, making them feel comfortable joining your system. Don't just go straight to, oh yeah, you can buy this, buy that. No, no. I mean, welcome me, make me feel comfortable to the brand. And then if I have made that purchase successfully, send me another email telling me, about the best ways to maximize what I just purchased. Now, you might think this is too much, but it makes more sense if I feel people buy from people they are comfortable with, right? And same thing goes for brands. So if if you communicate to me this way, it makes it, you are most likely to sell more to me. So we've talked about the introduction, which is the welcome plan. Now, I've purchased from you, you sent me another email telling me how to maximize what I've just purchased. That's what we call the engagement plan, right? So you've moved from welcome now to engagement. Now, a few weeks later, a few days later, depending on what you sell, you can move that same customer to the upsell plan. Now, the upsell plan is, yes, you just bought from us um, a red Ferrari, something like that. We think you would also need um, the blue one to go with it. We also think that you would need the black one in a few days' time because, I mean, the Grammys Awards is just a few weeks away. So I think black would do better for that. And if you don't mind, if you don't want to purchase it outright, we have this special plan that's expiring just before the Grammys where you can just rent it and, you know, return it back in a week's time. What you've just done is... You've, you've told the customer that I know you, I know, I understand what your needs are, and 
I think I get you. But now I'm making an offer, a a a a, a well timed offer, right? You you have to key into that offer now, else it will expire. Once you put that communication out to this specific, remember you're not sending this out to everybody on your list. We've we've welcomed everybody. We've engaged a few people who have shown interest in making a purchase. And now we are communicating to only a few people who have shown interest in the red Ferrari. Not everybody who likes cars on our list. Now, because we are speaking directly to those people, we can make, make these kind of offers that are key to them, targeting them. So, okay, yeah, you have the red already. Now, why don't you just purchase the yellow? If you don't want to purchase the yellow, you can actually just rent it out for a few days. That's upsell. You're making an upsell to a customer who you already know, who's already familiar with the brand, and who's willing or who has shown interest that is willing to make a purchase from you. Awesome. Cool, now cool, this. Cool. Now this. Um, sorry to cut you, John. Now this you okay. you you would want to do with um, some form of strategy behind it, right? So now depending on the kind of product you sell, the interval between when you send out the first welcome email and when you start making offers will differ, right? Depend on the type of product you sell. Now also the way the length of your communication would also differ. Again, depending on the type of brands that you are and the kind of products that you sell. Um, if you are into, say, your yeah, fashion label, for example, just um, segmenting your list into people who, who have purchased several times from you and people who have purchased just once from you, that's a good way to start, right? It's a simple segmentation multiple time buyer, one time buyer. So it makes it easy for you to clearly communicate with these people in a way that is different from how you communicate with frequent buyers. So for people who have just purchased one time, you are more focused on re-engaging them, making sure that they, they are abreast with what the brand is doing, they are abreast with the new trends in fashion because they've shown interest in um, in, in purchasing fashion items. While for people who have um, simply bought again and again from you, it's clear that they already get you, so don't spend so much time communicating that brand value essence and stuff. You are instead just doing offers, you know, oh, it's the season for Thanksgiving now, this is it. Oh, it's the season for Christmas now, this is it. It's the season for this, this is it. That way you get more value out of that segment than just shooting the same communication out to everybody on your list. Okay, so say someone were to be selling a digital product, how would they go about it? The same thing or maybe something slightly different? Digital products, same thing. So digital products, I would want to consider how the person got on my list. So, I mean, did the person register through my bio link on Instagram or he registers through my um, Facebook group or channel or something like that. So again, you know your channel, so one segment based on that. Um, did the person come into my list with a $1,000 product or with a high ticket product, high ticket consulting product? Again, you want to segment segment your list based on that as well. This way, again, you are, you are already setting a foundation for yourself, making your job of content creation easier you know so i mean if i'm speaking to a high ticket um, um, client i'm not giving him an offer of five dollars i'm not i'm not i'm not going to be giving him a lead magnet of ten dollars i mean he's already shown that cost is not the challenge here I, if, if i know the value i'm going to pay for the value so my communication is different it's it speaks to the value that he knows he's going to get it speaks to the 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 private sessions he's going to get from me. And so I communicate that instead and I get more from him that way than filling his mailbox with things he would not read. Now, that's another thing I did not mention. Now, there's this thing that um, I'm not, I'm not, I've not really experienced this myself, but I've, I've read about it and I've kind of like noticed it. If you're, if you're sending your emails out to someone and the person is really not 
responding. They're not opening the emails. They're not, they're not writing back to you. Over time, you just get to notice that your mails just move from inbox to promotion and from promotion to somewhere else that, you know, um, you can't even identify anymore because the bottom less doesn't bit. seat anymore. Because it's <laughs> something like that. You know, because it's, it seems like you're not interested anymore. You're not, you're, not, you're not interested from hearing from you. So the spam filters and the algorithms just move your email to less of a priority. Um, that's, that's, that's technically, that's also because, um, so there's this, let me just say it. So if you go to your inbox, right, you get an email, you go to your inbox, there is a feature on Gmail that allows you to see, um, they call it original email. So if you tap on that, it gives you the email as it was sent from the server. Now, if you look closely, you would see things like the IP address where it came from. Like for example, I know where MailChimp, I know about MailChimp. MailChimp's infrastructure is fantastic. Um, MailerLite, I know who's helping them send their emails. Convert Kits, I know who's helping them send their emails. Just by looking at that, you know, I know where the server is coming from. But there's, what I want to mention is there's this thing, um, I can't remember what it's called now, I'll have to check, but it's, it has three um, keywords. Either of the three will show up. It's either bulk, priority, or something else. I can't remember the last one. What that does is when your when your inbox is getting high traffic, so you're getting, say it's 12 noon right now, and you're getting a lot of emails come to your inbox, the email engines prioritize <laughs> what gets in and what's, what's, what's put in pending before it gets in, right? This is technically speaking now. So if a bulk email is coming at the same time a personal email is coming in, they will put more priority on the personal email than the bulk email. And if the bulk email gets to squeeze itself in, you know, just gets in, that's when it just lands in the promotion tab, like, hey, yo, just wait there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> this person is getting more high traffic on, you know, from more personal people, more people he's been engaging with over time, you know. So yeah. all of that come to play with delivering your email. And so if you if you are sending to everybody the same communication and a lot of them are not responding back to you, a lot of them are not opening your emails. You're already teaching the algorithm that, well, they really don't want to hear from him, so he's less of a priority than John Obidi's email, for example, or Samson's email, for example. You know? So over time, it's also advisable that because you cleaned your list in January 2020, you know there are no dead emails anymore. Over time, also just do a check with your content. So this is on the engagement plan. I could shoot out an email to help identify everybody who's opening it. So, for example, I shoot out an email and I say, um, thank you for being our customer for the last five months. We just want to reward you with this special something, something, something. Click on this link or best, best, no link clicking. Um, reply to this email with yes. And we'll send you this special ebook. We'll send you this special discount code. We'll send you this, you know, just so that you get to know who and who is opening it. When your email platform shows you, okay, yes, out of 10,000 people, 5,000 will actually open this email. That's 5,000 people, puts them in a new segment. That's a new list within a list. These are yeah. your engaged fans, your engaged audience you know these people they get to you they want to read from you they want to hear from you so you continue your frequency with them and reduce your frequency with these guys because these guys have shown that well we are really not so into you you know and then you would also need to if you are speaking to nigerians africans you would also recognize that we, most of us, did not really grow up with 
the internet culture. So some people still check their mails once in two days. You know, they're not mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, it just came in. So, so you would want to follow up with your analytics on your email dashboard to say, okay, fine. I just sent out the email now, but I will check back in two days and three days time to see if some people just open it up and then put them in the, in the new segment. If you have okay. a very fantastic email software, this segmentation should be automatic. If you have a very okay. fantastic email software, the um, sending should also be pre-thought, pre-planned, you know, and then it just goes out and you just see the reports. You don't have to always go sit down to set it up all the time. Talk, to, talking about email opens, um, what is the technical or what is the technology behind how your email list provider knows that a person has opened an email? Um, so is it because I've, 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 I've learned sort of that it's not exactly perfect um, depending on what email provider you're using. Um, so um, I think some of them use an image an image uh, pixel within the email, right? But yeah. that that I've re I've seen that that can be a problem where, um, in, like in Gmail, it's not images are not turned on automatically. So if a person reads your email and images were not turned on automatically, it doesn't count that person as though the email has been read. Have you experienced that? Yes. So I I held that belief. Um, until I think until last year, um, there are several ways this um, the technology now, community technology, apart from the email image tag, there are several ways you can actually count um, the open. So I've you know wondered that there are some marketers who just send out text emails. So. Uh, how's, how's it working? <laughs> you know, so yeah. so so that 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 um, that image tag thing. Yes, that was the old technology, but I mean we have we have moved way past. We moved way, way past okay. that now. You don't have to. I also see some marketers tell people, "Oh, turn on image." You know, okay. not really. You get okay. so uh, the one the scripts in the mail to the again the feedback so there's this thing although this don't apply this does not apply to this does not apply to open this applies to bounces and then um tracking so um there's this thing called the feedback loop so if you when when you send that when an email gets to your inbox gmail gmail has a way or the email provider has a way to send the message back to the sending server. That's the SM, um, so SMTP server. So when an email gets sent out to you, it gets sent out through an SMTP server. That's what it's called. Um, so the email client or ISP has a way to talk back to the sending server to say, hey, acknowledged, good job, or hey, this guy bounced, you know. Don't send again. Or hey, now you're blacklisted. Don't come near my door. You know. <laughs> yeah. So they, they have they have that they have that um, communication protocol. You know to, to 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 get that sorted. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So real quick, let's talk about something you have coming up. Um, it's called the Ultimate Email Marketing Workshop. It's uh it's yes. a workshop that has been recorded. And it 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 summarize or it, it goes into detail as to how corporates and individuals and businesses can start getting results from their email marketing campaigns. Let us know what that is about and how people can get access to it. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, John. Um, so, like I mentioned earlier, um, being in the agency business, and when I say agency business, not, this is not. Um, we do email marketing for our friends and family. This is agency business. We do email marketing for the banks and enterprises, so um, automobile companies. So everything basically that agencies know and profit from. Yeah, I want to. I want to kind of like spill the beans, you know, if you, if you, if you yeah. put it that way, because yeah. a lot of so a lot of people. 
this is what I say, yeah. Um, I've been saying this for a long time. Email email is the only app that over 70% of the adult population online have. I mean, mm. nobody tells you go download an email, email app. Everybody just has one because that's kind of like your identity online. So for brands who understand this, owning and dominating in the email or in the inbox is the way to go because people don't really change their email addresses. I mean, I'm still using my very first Gmail email address till date. But people have changed their Instagram Instagram names, their Facebook names, their Twitter names. You know, those things are more ephemeral. Even their phone numbers. Even their phone numbers, exactly. Yeah. You know? But the email is tied to a whole lot of banking and schooling and so people don't just change that so understanding how to how to get started with email marketing understanding how to position yourself to start building your list understanding how to clean your list understanding the technicalities behind the email delivery itself understanding how to um craft um a an automation funnel you know, I mean, we call it workflow, but I mean, the internet has taught us that what's involved now is funnel. So we just call it funnel as well. But okay. basically, it is there's a series of emails you've crafted down, and one flows into the next and flows into the next, depending on the frequency you've set and the time of delivery you've also set as well. So, how to craft stuff like that? Um, we have. We, for our own platform, we call them playbooks. We have created a few playbooks that um, I would also showcase, you know, that you can just copy and go and use if it applies to your to your kind of business. So yeah. Um, I would share what I, the link what, what I really what I really like here, um, what I'm really after is that the, the the science of email marketing that you are really versed in, and that is Things like the spam trap, how to avoid the spam trap, um, you know, getting your emails opened, avoiding the promotions folder. I think that th this science is something that has been hidden from a lot of people. And so, I mean, most of cons the consumers that are consuming, you know, email marketing services, they see what is happening, but not what is going on behind the scenes. But you see oh, what's yeah. going on behind yeah. the scenes. Oh, yeah, yeah. And why things happen the way they do. And so... I think that this is going to be a really valuable class. So, guys, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the link to the Ultimate Email Marketing Workshop. So if you click the link uh, in the description and it's right there on your screen right now, you'll be able to get access to that class. Uh, it's uh, it's a, a live workshop, but what you're going to get right now is a recording of that work workshop and you can get all the juice. Now, you were also going to be giving access to a tool along with that class, I think it's called Outbox. What is Outbox? Okay, so Outbox is um, the growth marketer's dream. Outbox is a, is a email automation platform, um, which we use for our own business. Outbox came out after, so we had, we had a retail product and we had built into this retail product a way to deliver eBooks directly when a customer purchases the book so you don't have to go and type it in and send it to the person privately you just set it you make their payments to get the ebook right um we also while we are promoting that product experienced a lot of some of our emails going to spam you know i mean i've done this before so why is this happening again because we have conquered this right yeah. so we looked deeper into it and then our box was born you know we solved it for ourselves and then we said okay fine let's have this out there for other people and brands who want to who want to get into email but they want to get into it sustainably so if you if what i say sustainably i mean like it shouldn't cost you so much but if you understand how to work it you will get more value for what you are paying so it's not just about oh i just set up an email account and that's it so if you're on outbox for example we we will not we have zero spam tolerance so if our mm. engine detects that you are 
sending out spam, we block you because we don't mm. want you to come and corrupt the system for gotcha. everybody else. Gotcha. Um, on the, on so, the what, system so, itself, so what, what will they be getting um, with, uh, will, will they be getting access to to Outbox with the ultimate? Oh yeah, so we'll have part of, part, of, part of the class would go through Outbox practically and then for everyone who's registered, they get one month free access to the system, their own Outbox account, which they can configure with their own domain names and stuff like that. And um, I think within that um, one month access, they can send out 3,000 emails at no charge. So that's, that's, a, that's a lot. That's a lot. So. That's a lot. And it also comes with... Um, automation and all these technical features in fact automation is our uh, is our strong suit for outbox so you can do the regular setup blast and email out to the segment but for us automation is our it's, it's, it's our it's our key automation and delivery those are our key our, our, our key features automation is a feature you can play with it delivery is not a feature delivery is more the back-end science how the emails are delivered. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Awesome. So finally, guys, that's the URL at the bottom of the screen. If you get right there, you'll get the ultimate email marketing workshop uh, with Samson Aliba. And you're also going to get access to Outbox. That is their new tool at SA, their new tool that you can use to send emails and also have that marketing automation that they are so good at and you'll get it for free for 30 days and you'll be able to send 3000 emails i mean by the time you, you you use it for that length of time i'm sure you'll be sold on actually getting um one of the higher plans so samson give us five email marketing hacks that people can just take away and start using today five okay um, first one, your your subject line. Your subject line should your subject line should pick my interest. It should cause curiosity in me. There's a there's a there's a formula a lot of people use. So one of whom, that formula is this. Okay, so let me use give me a, give me something. Let me do an example. I can't come up anything. Just just give me something. Like, um, I want to send an email to market my coming event. Okay. So, um, so the subject line would be um, event title because XYZ or the only result of events, the only result for people like XYZ. You know, that's like, oh, I get you. Um, this is the only result for people like you because I get you. The first one right. was, uh, the first one was, um, this thing was created just for people like you. And yeah, yeah, you're like, okay, yeah, why not? People like me, me, other people are in on it. <laughs> I need to be in on it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so that's, so that's one, your subject line. And then the second, the second one is, um, um, especially for brands, for individual marketers, they really don't have this problem. But for brands, they want to send out their first email with a lot of images. Now, if you are, if you are delivering an email to my inbox and my email server notices that that email is a bit on the high side, it has a lot of fat. You know, it's it's big, it's heavy, it's one, it's over, it's two megabytes because you've designed it, you know, with Photoshop or something, and you know, you just want it to look pretty. I mean, that's instant red flag. Like, what's right. what's going on in here? You know, we don't have the time to start looking through it if it's spam or not. So let's just paint you somewhere. You know, <laughs> when you are serious, you would introduce yourself better. Yeah. So, if, yeah. Even if you, even if you are a brand who is very particular about the aesthetics and how they look, your first series of emails should come simply text. You know, not heavy. One or two images. One image, if you can, if you can't help it, you know, and just introduce yourself to my inbox. Tell me 
you are good to go. Tell me, tell make make me open it first before you start shooting all the heavy stuff. Yeah. Number three would be um, your domain reputation when it comes to sharing links and emails. Now, this one, this one I experienced first time, like not my team, like me myself. So there was a particular email was sent out once and it had the URL for a purchase and someone actually responded to the email saying, this is my WhatsApp phone number. Send me this link on WhatsApp because I don't trust links I click in my browser. And I was like, what? I mean, people are that careful. So if you are sending a link within your email, it should be, it should be, it should be a recognizable domain. That's one. Don't go do use one short URL because you want to track it and then use one short URL from Russia or no disrespect to Russia, but I mean, I see some some something dot ru slash number 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 slash yo where are you going i don't i'm not yeah. clicking on this thing you know yeah um so that's you should also pay attention to if you're going to use a short url put it there don't just hide it behind the text let it be clear it was clearly spelled out this is the url um if you're also going to send out urls in an email don't put too much in one email Best mm. practice, just one URL, one call to action. You start filling it up with click here for this, click here for that, click here, spam, straight up. That's that one's even an old trick. So they yeah. wouldn't even think twice. They just throw you in the spam, spam, spam folder, straight up. Go cool yeah. off there. So that's number three. Um number four. Number four is a very is little well known actually. If you send out if you send out lengthy, very long emails, you are and your open rate is good. So this is this is for people who have actually built an audience, and your audience always wants to hear from you. Make your content a, li a little bit longer. Here's why: again, you are training the algorithm. You are training the algorithm to know that um, your emails are highly valued because. It notices this person opened it and they are spending some time going through it. That is value. You remember, algorithms are not humans, they are machines. As much as AI wants to make them closer to how we think, we're not there yet. Um, so, just that single act of making it believe that. Every time I open it, I spend one minute, two minutes going through the email. Every time I open it, says, oh, yeah, I really want to hear from this guy who's sending me this email. So next time you get an email from John BD, priority, just let it come through. Okay. That's number four. Okay, number five. Yes. Um, number five. Let's see. If you can... Um, if you can use um, use your own dedicated IP, if you can, um, if you can't, so I don't know about I don't know about all the other systems, but if you are if you use Mailgun for example, we used to use Mailgun in the past. Use Mailgun, they have a feature where they allow you to change your IP or rather request for a new IP. So there are some services again online. I, I'll mention this in the class. Um, it's already in the class anyway, so where you can go and check the reputation of the IP address. If it's been blacklisted, okay. if it has a poor spam score. Yeah. So if you notice that your IP, shared IP that you are on has a um, poor spam score, you can, if your email service allows you, you can request for, request for a new one or um, move to a different plan that has has a better um, um, sender score. That will actually right. help you. Yeah, if you are if you are on a if you are on a shared IP address and it really has a low score, then there's not there's nothing there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing really you can do. You 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 are not in control of that technology. So hey, the the only thing I've noticed that we have 
that we have tried to do in the past to go around that is to um so say well on this plan the ip is really not very good because the systems kind of like rotate the ip address for the shared plans that's what we noticed instead of sending this email we want to send now we just maybe wait a few days and probably we'll get a, a, a different ip you know and then we shoot the mail <laughs> so it's a lot okay. of uh, uh, Working on eggshells and all of that stuff. Yeah, if you're yeah. if you're on free plans and shared plans and all of that stuff, yeah. So if you can, dedicated IP, paid um, plan and all of that stuff, yeah. Thank you, Samson. Guys, you need to attend the ultimate email marketing workshop. I mean, it's a recording now, but you need to pick that up today. If you enjoyed this episode, you are going to enjoy that class. You're going to get so much. You're going to get the science of email marketing especially how to get results and how to avoid spam the technicalities behind how the biggest companies in the world avoid the spam folder and this workshop is going to place that power in your hands all right so get to the link in the description and it's right there also on the screen go right there and get a copy of this product um samson Thank you so much for being on here. Thank you um, for having me. Guys, head on over to Instagram. Follow Samson on Instagram. This handle is at GDI. And um, you can send him a DM. Follow the links in his description. He has a lot of other goodies there. But the most important goodie right now is the Ultimate Email Marketing Workshop. Get a copy of that product and change your business forever. Samson, thank you for being on here. I will see you thank on you the inside. Much. Yeah. Bye bye. All right, guys, that has been the ultimate email marketing. I mean, that has been the Head Start Master, the Head Start Masterclass: How to Get Results from Email Marketing with the Email Marketing Genius, Samson Aligba. Um, as always, we want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, Visa. Visa has just launched the Visa SME Hub to support Nigerian small businesses, and one of the things that they are giving small businesses as part of this initiative is a free e-commerce store and so without any money down you can get started with your own e-commerce store pre-integrated with payment gateways such as flutterwave and paystack all you have to do is head on over to visa.com.ng to get started today. Hello, my name is Nelly Abogu. I'm the CEO of Nelly's Nigeria. I am a wife, a mom, and an entrepreneur. Every small business has its own unique story. Mine began when I decided to make healthy gluten-free products for my son. When people saw what I was doing and how my business was growing, they asked, how are you growing your business? And that was how Niger Brand Chic was created. We source our ingredients locally because we know that where you shop matters. Small business entrepreneurs can assess a bouquet of digital solutions and business offers to grow their business online by simply signing up on the website. Sign up at visa.com.au.